A heartbroken family in Chicago looking for answers after a young truck driver from the west suburbs was found dead in North Carolina. Javier McGee was just 21. We have to warn you, some of the details might be hard to hear this afternoon. Police say he was discovered not far from his truck in the city of Henderson Wednesday, leaning against a tree with a rope around his neck. His family suspects foul play, but police say it wasn't a lynching. Initially, the family says the Vance County Sheriff's Office told them McGee died by suicide. But today, the sheriff's written statement doesn't list his death as a suicide and says they're now investigating his death. Javian's family wants the FBI to step in. I just feel something in my bones that's not right, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Candace Matthews is speaking for McGee's mother and says the family wants transparency. His death captured attention this week when his cousin posted a TikTok accusing law enforcement of dragging their feet in the investigation. Family has traveled to North Carolina to press investigators for more information because police are saying McGee purchased the rope at a Walmart before he died. The family spokesperson saying the timeline isn't adding up. This family deserves answers. And you are going to do your job because something happened between that Walmart distribution center and that young man being hung from a tree. There's an issue. Now, Javion, also the parents want to know, has had no history of mental health, has no criminal history. You know, Javion was a happy individual. In fact, he was happy to even have a CDL license that he just not that long got. Mickey's body is now with the medical examiner for an autopsy. The sheriff's office says they'll share the results with the family as soon as they come in and before they make that report public. Wow. Um, listen, you guys, this is a tragedy. Um, very, very evil. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that happen all too often in this country. And listen, we're going to we're going to talk about it before we get into that. Please prayers go out to the family of Javion McGee. Uh, friends and family, this is such a tragedy uh, that took place, and I do understand their frustration, you guys. Um, for those who are new to the channel, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, and let's talk about this. And those who aren't familiar with this channel, you guys, I'm a 13-year law enforcement veteran, so I have experience in law enforcement matters. I've investigated similar cases to these, from uh, deaths to suicides to deaths that, that were staged as suicides, and so... So let's kind of look into uh, the details as far as what's been released by the sheriff's department. Um, here, his interview, you guys, and I'm kind of just give you my personal thoughts in reference to it. And then I'm going to share with you my opinions from as an expert witness. You guys, I've worked with defendants. I've worked with the state examining police behavior, police policies, procedure and use of force. And so I get to render opinions on on high profile cases um, in this country. And so um i'm really curious to kind of see how this unfolds as more information develops and evidence is revealed to the public um and i believe according to the cousin um uh, i think i've heard that the parents have acquired an attorney which is which is excellent you know definitely going to need that guidance throughout this process to double check to make sure things are done properly and anyone who knows the family and they see this video or friends of the family uh, I am more than welcome to lend uh, my services as well, reviewing the police information to ensure that things are done properly. So let's, without further ado, let's kind of get into this, but just give you some backstory. The sheriff is sharing some information with the public as it relates to the backlash he's been receiving from social media. Thanks to the cousin, she actually put out a post asking for support and uh, she got it. You know, which is very important because unfortunately a lot of these things happen and they go under the radar and they don't get the publicity they need to get the resources needed to investigate properly. So by social media putting pressure on departments, it forces people to act and it does expose bad actors with inside um, government or officials who are working on this case, not trying to do their job properly. So shout out to her. Let's go into this video and then we're going to talk about um, what was said. So, Sheriff, uh, you know, first of all, can you just, you know, walk me through what we know, the timetable of, of when he was found and, and what we know so far? Good morning. Yes. Uh, and this is Sheriff Curtis Brame here in Vance County. On Wednesday, September 11th, approximately um, 
10.08 a.m., Vance County Sheriff Office will receive a call out to a rural part of the community, Banco Mill Road, 285 Banco Mill Road, where a deceased young man was sitting up against a tree, with his back up against a tree. He had a rope around his neck, and he had the top of the rope was up in the tree limb. Um, there was not a noose. There was not a knot in the rope. Um, we have information that we got that this young man was had visited a local Walmart um, store here in Henderson where he purchased an item that it will possibly use around his neck. Uh, we still, it's an open investigation at this time. Uh, we, we, we're following all the resources and avenue. We're utilizing, uh, we found out he was a truck driver after we identified who he was. At first we had no identity on him because he had no ID on him. Okay, first thing first, just listening to what the sheriff is saying, you guys were already off to a bad start. We are already off to a bad start and I can see why the family is so frustrated with the department because the sheriff is already showing that he lacks the experience dealing with high profile cases as this has now become. And then also maybe murder investigations uh, because there's things that he's revealing in this statement that he should not have at, right? He's making conclusive statements without having all the facts. And he himself also verified he doesn't have all the facts. So what are we dealing with? He makes a statement and he says, at approximately 10 a.m., the body was located. Someone called 911. We showed up. What we observed was there was a rope around his neck. Um, but he's like, this wasn't a lynching, right? Because there wasn't a knot. You know, because there wasn't a knot. It's not a French knot. It's not. The knot needs to be specific to be a lynching, guys. That's, that's false. He makes a statement saying, you know, he wasn't swinging from a tree. So this isn't a lynching. He just had a, a rope around his neck. I'm going to tell you why that's an issue and why it's a problem that he said it, all right, a little later on. But the fact that he revealed that, made that conclusive statement, also saying, well, we believe it's the rope he got from Walmart. But, you know, we're not sure. What is he saying? He's saying he's speculating, right? He's speculating. He's not speaking with confidence. He's not speaking with, you know, hey, this is exactly what it is. We verified it. That rope that was used was also bought in the store. What he should have said is we're not ruling out anything, right? You guys, the rule of thumb as investigators and what they teach us is that when you're investigating a crime, you chase the evidence. You don't chase your opinions. Let the evidence speak the truth. You don't speak truth to the evidence. That's not how it works. What tends to happen is that people come with their own preconceived idea of what took place and then they let that bias interfere with the investigation. We see this all the time. It's like, ah, well, you know, so-and-so did this. She did that. She put herself in the situation. Well, this must be what it is. He did this. He did that. He put himself in this. That's what, no. And, and sometimes, you guys, that's not the case. Um, it's not uncommon for bodies to be moved and for crime scenes to be staged to distract you from the real crime. Okay? That's not uncommon. So you have to be careful when you make statements like that. Um, he should have said, we're not ruling anything out. This is a death investigation. We're going to treat it as such. You can describe what you saw at the scene, but you don't make any definitive statements. Um, you're going to rule out whatever and you haven't, you can't really provide any evidence to support. And once we identified who he was, we found that his, the tractor trailer that he was driving was in an adjacent lot to from where his body was located. Um, so at, we contacted his family in Aurora, uh, Illinois. Uh, we had the Aurora Police Department go out and contact his family. And once that notification was made, we uh, personally talked to my investigators, talked to the family, and, and, and informed them of the information that, and the, and the ongoing investigation, uh, the, or the death investigation of their son, that 21-year-old son, uh, Mr. Magby. And so at this point, I mean, you, I mean, you sure you've seen some of these videos from family members that have out there sort of, you know, questioning whether there could be foul play involved. You know, what's your response to that? Um, I understand the loss. Uh, I feel uh, gratitude, uh, condolences, not gratitude, but condolences go out to the family. Uh, I never lost a child to the mother and to their loved ones. So at this point, you know, the questions of whether or not he's incompetent are going to start to really surface, right? You get the victim's name wrong, Mr. Magby. You know, I could see why the parents and the family member have lost confidence, right? 
He's not oozing with competence and wisdom and we can do this. And not saying that he's not intelligent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that he's he's not the right person for speaking to the media. He should not be speaking to the media. He should have maybe asked one of his investigators to do it. He probably should have maybe wrote a letter, provided those questions, given the questions from the media and wrote a letter, had the media actually read it out loud or obviously what they're doing. If he's not articulate enough, right? This is a very sensitive topic, you guys. Everybody can't be in front of the camera. This is the reality of it. And and so he's really dropping the ball on this. And, I, and again, uh, this isn't a good look. He makes a statement later on in the interview and he says, they took a photo, sent the photo to the family. The family positively ID'd him. So, you know, that's another thing. Then there's also a second allegation the family's making saying that they cannot see the body. Well, one of the unique things about this, you guys, is unfortunately for people on the outside, a lot of times we don't know what the procedures and the process is as it relates to a particular thing because you're just not familiar. It is on the police to actually explain the proper protocol and procedure, how these things work. When the incident happened, the family's all the way in Chicago. So they weren't able to go right away to go view the body at the time of the incident when when uh, Mr. McGee was found. So normally when you live in the same area, it's nothing for you to make that trip. Uh, but because of the distance, you guys, I don't know if they're driving or they're taking a plane. The body can't just stay there and wait for the family. The body has to be removed from the area. And more than likely, the body is immediately taken to the medical examiner's office. You guys, anytime I go on the scene and I look at a body, I'm looking for foul play. I'm looking for whatever I can. I report back to the medical examiners and investigators. Um, depending on the type of crime it is, you send it to a particular group. They say, okay. Call the ME, let them come get it. They come, they take their pictures along a crime scene. They take the body and they immediately take it to the ME's office. When it's there, I know here in Georgia, a lot of things, you cannot, you cannot go and look at the body while it's at the ME's. I, I've never had a case where they were allowed to do that. So I don't know if they make exceptions, right? But the body was already positively ID by the family via a photo, which is, which is what you can do. There's other ways you can ID. That's through dental records. That's fingerprints, that's tattoos, depending on the condition of the body, um, that's personal belongings, right? So so I don't think the, the statement is that we can't see the body. I don't believe that's true. I believe that you can't see the body now because it's in a facility being investigated. But I do understand the concern. And I believe the issue is the family wants to confirm or to verify that there is no foul play on his body. And I completely understand that and I agree 100%. So, but I think that that didn't translate well through social media, right? Because the statement is they won't let us see the body. And that's why you have to kind of be careful when you hear things online or how things are interpreted from police to the family. Those things could have been taken out of context. Um, that's my opinion, though, right? Because I don't know 100% what was said, but based on what the cousin said, they won't they won't let them see the body. But then you hear the sheriff saying that's not the case, right? Um, and I know how the ME works. So put all that together, you have confusion, right? But again, that falls back on the, the department for not properly articulating the processes because the family feels like they're not being transparent, but transparent about what? But then you hear how the sheriff talks and I'd be skeptical too, right? So, and again, you guys, we're talking about an incident that's happening in the South. So it's not uncommon to rule out foul play from someone who might be a racist, who might've been targeting him. He could have been targeted due to racism. He could have been uh, targeted due to maybe uh, criminal activity he could have been involved in. Uh, he could have actually did try to take his life. Right. So there 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 are still a multitude of of directions this thing can go in based on the investigation. Um, it is not uncommon. There are cases with truck drivers who are working with criminal organizations and found themselves crossing paths in the wrong direction um, and have been um, murdered behind that. You guys, it's not uncommon either. Um, and then it's not uncommon for a black man or a black woman to be in an area where it's highly saturated with racist people and be hunted down and killed. That's also very likely. All these things are very true. And so you cannot assume that one is more relevant than the other unless the evidence leads to it. So there's a lot that can be done. Um, so he says he was found just 
not too far from his truck. Regarding perceptions and, and, and get clarity and to be transparent that the Vance County Sheriff's Department is not withholding anything and sharing information regarding to the decedent to, to the family. Is, is there an autopsy yet? An autopsy is being performed today, yes. Okay. And uh, also, you know, with regard to, you know, the rope maybe possibly being bought at Walmart, is that you, would you be able to release that surveillance video? Uh, once we compile the information that we have, uh, step by step, um, talking to the district attorney, the local district attorney, and the SBI. We don't want to release too much information too soon because this is an ongoing investigation. And we just actually about to be patient and so we can do a thorough investigation to get the proper information out there and ask people to stay off social media and slow down. We know his last known whereabouts can be traced back to the Walmart shopping store. He went in there. He made some purchases. What am I doing as an investigator? I want to know what he purchased, what time he purchased them. I want to know who he was talking on his phone, who, the last person he spoke to that morning. I want to know where was he supposed to be at and where was he going? Did he have a load on the truck he was supposed to deliver? Um, I want to know what happened last week. I want to know the people he com conversed with last week. I want to do a search of that truck as well. Um, is there any damage to the doors? Okay. Um, I want to know all those things. I want to know what he purchased. You know, the sheriff made a statement that he may have purchased that rope inside Walmart. So it didn't sound definitive, right? He made a definitive statement saying that he's ruling out lynching um, and he's leaning more towards suicide, which I think he really told the family that. I think he I think he did. And I think he probably walked it back because they wouldn't have said that if, if he didn't say that. Right. So I think he realized he made a mistake and he tries, he's trying to clean it up. This is an open investigation and we're going to let it, we're treating it as a, we're treating it as a, a death, a homicide until we see otherwise. That's always the best thing. It's always the best thing. Treat it as a homicide until it's otherwise. Uh, so what else am I looking at? Why do I want to know what he bought for obvious reasons? Right. If he did buy the rope. Okay. Why? OK, I want to know what's his relationship like with his family. You know, is he is he dating? Is he seeing anybody? Uh, I want to know what his uh, his expenses, what his credit score. I'm looking at things that would would highlight any form of maybe depression or sadness, guilt. I'm looking at things to try to rule out. Um, was this person suicidal? Did he have plans next week? You know, was he supposed to be like I'm looking at all these things, you know, any little any little details that will help me come out of this suicide idea. Um, what else am I looking at? Um, why did he not have his wallet on him when he was found? Where was his wallet located? Did we ever locate his wallet? Because now if we don't locate his wallet, now I'm thinking, okay, was he robbed? You know, was he stopped? Um, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at under his fingernails, you know, I'm looking at, you know, do we see any blood under there? Anything is any, Anything dark colors, you know, that could maybe suggest he may have scratched somebody or or whatever. I'm looking at all those things. But what could have happened to you guys? A potential thing could be, um, you know, his body could have been he could have been assaulted somewhere in one location. And then his body moved to another location to give the appearance of of a suicide or to give the appearance of a racial lynching. Right. Um, so that's very true to realities. Someone could have been lying in wait inside of his truck and strangled him. OK, then took that rope and staged the scene as if he was hung, either that committed suicide or he or he hung himself. What if someone was trying to recreate a lynching, but was spooked off right by maybe somebody coming in the area, a car driving by, you know, um, I'm looking at what time is he at Walmart? What time was his body found? That's a very short window, possibly. They located him at 10 o'clock or, you know, they didn't say what time he was at Walmart. So we don't know. He could have been at Walmart the night before. Right. And so that gives this very, very long window of an altercation that could have taken place. Um, so it looks like to me, based on what was explained, that maybe someone was trying to basically stage a crime scene, got spooked, couldn't finish. Because according to the sheriff, it's like there was no knot. There was no knot. And the rope was just kind of flung over a branch the way he kind of described it. But he's like, oh, he wasn't swinging from a tree. But, you know, that was just kind of unnecessary detail. Um, and just because he wasn't swinging from the tree doesn't mean that he was not lynched. OK, the branch could have cracked and fell, you know, so forth and so on. There's so many different things that could have taken place um, and or he could have tried to commit suicide.
hanging from a very low level, right? That's that's also very practical as well, you guys. So um, they have they have a lot on their hands, all right? So let's kind of get back into the video, kind of see what else he talks about. And report the facts. As to, I understand there's over a thousand hits on TikTok. Uh, the sheriff office not being transparent, not providing information to the family, and that is not true. There's been information put out there that there's a lynching in Vance County. There is not a lynching in Vance County. The young man was not dangling from a tree. He was not swinging from a tree. The rope was wrapped around his neck. It was not a noose. It was not a knot in the rope. So therefore, it was not a lynching here in Vance County. Well, on, on the other side of things, do you believe at this point, or can we, can we confidently, it was a suicide? I cannot without the uh, report, the cause of death from the uh, um, medical examiner. We're, we're going down every avenue, every aspect, all the information, videos. Uh, we we got in contact with the trucking company uh, to get his GPS reading of all his whereabouts while he was here in Vance County in the Henderson area. So right now, we don't know exactly the cause of death of this young man. So no, I cannot say it was suicide at this time. Oh my God. <laughs> what you know I can't believe you said that could you imagine I would be losing my mind as a family I would I would, I would have lost it he wasn't swinging from a tree he wasn't there's a saying a wise saying the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence and so basically what that means is just because you don't see it doesn't mean it it, it doesn't exist right just because you haven't figured it out yet doesn't mean it, it can't be you know, the absence of evidence is not evident that it's absent, okay? So, you know, his statement is so flawed, so dangerously flawed. I understand why the, the family are, they're up in arms about this. You know, he's not giving a confident, I know what I'm doing, our department knows what it's doing. You know, we probably, it's more than likely a very small department um, and he did say he was getting the, uh, I guess the S. I think they call it the SRB, which is probably the state's investigators to look into the matter. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. Okay, and uh, and also on on the other side, Newt can't say foul. Uh, you know, how is it being treated? Just as a death investigation? It's been treated in, in to, as a death investigation until we rule it out. Okay. Are there any signs of any foul play? No, sir. Not at this time. No signs of foul play or implication of anyone else involved at this time. You know, now what's your message to the family? I mean, obviously, regardless of what this was, I mean, they're thousands of miles away in Chicago. You get news that, you know, your son is found you know, near a tree in the middle of North Carolina. Be patient. Call us 24-7. Uh, the Vance County Sheriff Office, 252-738-2200. I'm Sheriff Curtis Brain. Call me or one of my investigators. And with a, any time of day or night, we will come and we will meet you here at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm sorry that the family wasn't awarded that opportunity to view their son or their loved ones. And in a natural, not a natural circumstance, but in a normal circumstance where someone is um, deceased and, and taken to a local hospital, the family are awarded that opportunity to go to the hospital, to the emergency room, or, 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 or either some other form of fashion so they can view the body and identify the person. This young man was not disfigured in any form or fashion. The picture ID that we took, uh, the picture that we taken of him was positively you could identify as being your child or identify someone who knew to could identify that picture. So where is he now then? His, his body is at the medical examiner office, been for autopsy. The, for the for the autopsy. Yes, sir. And do we know when the results of that are going to come in? Hopefully today we get a preliminary and, and give us a, a a better understanding of what happened. And will you you'll release that right away? I, I will share the information with the family first, mm -hmm. and then uh, make a decision from the district attorney about sharing it with the press and with the public. Is there anything else that you, you know, you mentioned that you've seen out there on social media that you want, that you saw that you wanted to address or clear the air about? I do. I just want people to stay out of their room and meals, stick to the facts, let, allow us to do our job and be patient and, and, you know, and stop saying that the sheriff is not being transparent or that the sheriff is not doing what he's supposed to do. I'm very clear in my duties and my responsibilities and my obligations to the citizens of Vance County in the state of North Carolina. And can you, do you know who found him or what the circumstances of the call coming in were? I have not released that information this time, sir.
Okay. Uh, the call came in through 911, so therefore it's, it's a recorded and we'll be able to trace that back. So, uh, do you, so we can't say who, who came, up, came upon him? Not at this time, just part of the ongoing investigation. So basically he's now explaining the whole thing about viewing the body, which is I, what I said earlier is that I think that may, there may possibly have been a misunderstanding, uh, miscommunication. As you can see, he's not really articulate, especially explaining um, the things and I don't know what maybe the deputies or the investigator may have told the family. That's another thing. You know, again, you guys, we're limited to the information. I'm limited to the information, so I don't want to make too many definitive statements. What I can say, though, is that they're not going to be denied access to view the body. They will definitely be able to access the body after the ME is done. Doing their preliminary investigation, they will be able to see the body. Uh, so I'm curious to see what the outcome of the examination is going to be. Um, more than, I don't want to speculate, but um, I say let's just wait until we hear more information and then we kind of go from there. Um, again, this is very tragic. It's very, very sad news. My heart goes out to the family and their friends. And um, please keep them in your prayer. I pray that um, more evidence gets exposed and it leads us to what really happened. Um, and prayerfully we can we can get some some closure. So with that being said, you guys, let me know your thoughts and comments in this video. And if anybody knows, again, the family there, if they need my assistance, I would be more than happy uh, to assist. Um, please just, you know, give me an email. Um, so anyways, you guys like, comment, share, subscribe with that. Good night. and God bless.